This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. With our Amazon bot, and in the previous video, what we did is we had the bot go and search items from a list. So we had a Python list here, and our Python program would go to Amazon, and it would search in that list for the items on Amazon, and then it would just essentially do that. So the remaining part of this video, what we're gonna do here, is we're going to, once we navigate to that page, select the first item in the list of objects we get back from Amazon. So for instance, if we go to Amazon here, we searched in toothpaste in the last video, and generally what I would suggest that we do, just to make this a little bit easier, is we select the first item that pops up in the list of suggestions from Amazon. So we click on that link, and then what we're gonna to wanna to do after that is we're going to want to extract the price, the product name, and then also the URL of the product. So we can store all of those things in the spreadsheet. So that's the general idea. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to go back and we're gonna see how we can try to access results to the web page here. Say inspect. Uh, I know that this object, the first one, all of the items on this page rank from a variable called result underscore zero, result underscore one. And I can see that here, that the ID of this first object is uh, result underscore zero. If you click on the next one here, if you look for result underscore one, you'll notice that that highlights the second object in the list and so on for result underscore two and uh, on down the page. So since we wanted to select the first one, I want to find the result on the page that corresponds to the item with result underscore zero. So we're gonna want to find that element on the page and then follow that link, extract the link from there and then actually follow that. So let's minimize this, go back to our code. So after we've searched the Amazon website for a item and we've clicked the search button, we're going to sleep and then we're going to want to find element by result zero. So let's go ahead and just say first result is equal to self.driver.find element by ID. And again, in here, what we're gonna put is result underscore zero because we wanna get the first element. So the next thing that we wanna do is we want to get the attribute that corresponds to the uh, URL. So let's go back here. So if we look at this link tag, we have the result is equal to zero, there's a class, data result is equal to zero and then data dash ASIN and then we have this code here. So this code is a kind of a URL shortener that if we say amazon.ca dot slash dp slash this thing, it will reroute to the first item here in this list. Let me show you what I mean. So let me copy this, uh, this code. Let me open up a new tab. Let me paste that in there and let me type in amazon.ca slash dp slash that code. If we click there, that's going to take us directly to that item that we saw from before. So that's the item right here. So that's just going to allow us to store a more concise URL instead of clicking here and then storing this whole URL inside of the spreadsheet, which might be a bit verbose. We can just store the shorthand, the ASIN. So that's what we're going to do there. So let's go back to our code. And let's go ahead and grab that. So we'll say ASIN is equal to first result dot get attribute. So we're going to get the attribute of that tag and the attribute that we want to grab is data dash ASIN. Okay, so now what we can do is we can construct the URL from that code. So how we did that is we can say URL is equal to the base URL, which in this case is HTTPS slash slash www.amazon.ca and then that's slash dp and then we're going to tag on the asin so we're going to say plus because we're concatenating from strings asin so that's going to construct for us the url so we can store that in the spreadsheet so we still need to do two other things namely we need to get the price and we need to get the product name so i'm going to do the following things i'm going to essentially move those components move that functionality into two different functions so i'm going to say the price of the item that we're searching is equal to let's say self dot get product price and for this function it's going to take the URL so essentially what I imagine here is we're going to construct a class function called get product price it's going to take in the URL that we constructed it's going to go to that URL and then we're going to uh, inside of this function find a way to extract the price return it as a string and then feed that back into the variable here and we'll go ahead and do the same with the product name so we'll say name is equal to self dot get product name and that will also take a URL as well 
And then the idea, <clears throat> once we get those back from the functions that we write, we're going to store them in the lists that we uh, created up here. So again, the purpose of these lists is we loop through all of the items in our list that we pass into the class object, and then we fill those items with all of the respective URLs, prices, and names. So let's go back down here, and let's say prices.append, and we'll append the price. We'll say names, or let's say URLs.append, URL and then we'll say names dot append name and then what we can also do if we want some extra output just so we can actually see that it's actually getting those names prices and URLs we can say print name print price and then print URL so this is just for our own benefit uh, so we can actually see what's going on and then we'll go ahead and add another sleep here just for good measure again this is probably a more elegant way to do this using the weight uh, method for selenium and then after we've acquired all of our lists and, fi and filled them with all of the prices, <clears throat> URLs, and names, we're going to return them. So we're going to say return prices, URLs, and names. So now we can go ahead and actually write those functions that we just wrote kind of placeholders for. Let's go ahead and write the git product price. That'll take in a URL and also self since this is going to be a class method. And then we're going to just put pass in here for now. And then we'll also say git product name so same thing so it takes self since it's a class uh, function and also the url that it needs to go to so in this case what we want to do let's start off with the get product name function so what essentially we want to do is we want it to go to that url and then we're going to want to find the element on the page that corresponds to the title we're going to want to extract that if we can actually get it and then we're going to want to return that to the uh, as the result of the return of the function so let's go back to the browser let's see how we can actually access this attribute. So we can see that on the page here, the title corresponds to this portion right there. That's essentially what we want to grab. That's what we want to see if we can uh, access and store. So let's just go ahead and right click on, on this title. Let's say inspect element. If we do that, we see that it does have a span ID and the ID of that is product uppercase title. So we can actually look for the element on the page with that attribute and then we can just find that, store it and then return it. So let's go back to our code. So in get product price, what we're going to do is we're going to say self.driver.get URL. So we're going to go to that URL that we constructed from the previous function. We're actually going to go there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try, we're going to try to actually get the product name. So we're going to say product name is equal to self.driver.find element by ID. And then we're going to pass it in that ID that we found. So that was product title. So the reason that we're wrapping this in a try accept statement is because if that element on the page is not present, then we don't want our code to just crash because if it can't find that attribute on the page, our code is just going to essentially stop execution right there. So we're going to want to try to find it. And if we can't find it, then essentially we'll just pass. And then what we're going to do is if the product name, if the try did not execute properly and we hit this accept, we're going to go ahead and check before we return if product name is none. If product name is none, that means that we didn't populate it with any string. So we'll say if product name is none, so we'll say is none. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to say product name is equal to just not available. So that's going to allow us to fill it in with a string that isn't obviously the title of the item, but it is something so that way we can actually put that in our spreadsheet and we can uh, address that later. So after we've done that, we're going to say return product name. So we've returned the product name and product price is going to follow kind of a similar uh, trajectory. The only thing that's going to be a little bit different is there's one or two different things that we need to add in there. So let's go back to the web page. And the price that we want to get for an item is found here. So if we right click on that element, say inspect element there, we see that that is also wrapped into an ID that's price block underscore our price. Now I've noticed in other items, sometimes this ID is different. So it could be price block underscore deal price as well. So it really depends on whether or not there's a deal going and whether or not they have our price or deal price. So we're going to want to uh, get the price irrespective of whether or not it's our price or deal price. So we're going to want to wrap that in a try and accept. So if it's deal price, get it. If it's our price, get it. If it's none of those, then just put in not available. So that's what we're going to start off by doing in the product price price function. So inside of this function, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say self.get URL or self.driver.get URL pass that in and then we're going to say try and then price is equal to self 
that driver that find element by ID. So again, the ID that we're looking for here is price block underscore our price. And if we can't find that, then we'll just go ahead and say accept pass. We'll have another try and accept right here. As I mentioned, sometimes the price uh, item, the ID I should say, is price block deal price. So we're going to want to say self dot driver that find element by ID price block deal price. So if that's the case, then go ahead and grab that. Otherwise, just pass. So it's going to grab the price if any of those things are true. And if price is none, so this is the same thing that we did for the name. So if it's none, then just go ahead and say price is equal to not available. And then what we can do is we can uh, return price. So one final thing that I want to do just in the formatting is that if we do grab this whole thing here, the price, the element that's wrapped inside of this thing is this whole component. So it includes the currency, includes the dollar sign, includes uh, this per milliliter, which maybe I don't want. So I'd like to extract all of that out of there. And all I want is the number, decimal sign, and the uh, cents. So the dollar and the cents. That's all I really want to store and show. So your situation might be different. You might want to uh, take that whole component. Maybe you want to know how much it is per milliliter. That's a valid thing to want to keep. But for the purpose of this video and the way that the script executed in the beginning part, we want to uh, get rid of that. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go back up here. And if the price is grabbed by either of those two methods, I'm going to use a regular expression to say, actually, you know what you can do is just regular expression, find those elements that I don't want, namely the dollar sign and anything trailing after the uh, these cents, go ahead and get rid of those and then just uh, return that element. So actually what I'm going to do is just move this up here and I'm going to say else. So if the price is none, go ahead and set that as not available. Otherwise, if we did grab it from either of those two element IDs, go ahead and use this regular expression. So I'm going to say non decimal is equal to re.compile, which is basically just the way that we're going to construct our regular expression. So what I'm going to do is just kind of write out the regular expression and all it's really doing, it might look a little bit complicated, is just saying in the string, find the digits and get me the digit that's preceded by a decimal, the decimal, and then the digits that uh, follow the decimal as well. So the way that we can write that as regular expression is just in the following way. So slash d dot and then plus. So if you want more uh, content or information on how regular expression operates, I'd suggest that you either look it up in another YouTube video or another source. Um, that probably goes beyond the, the scope of this video, but very succinctly, that's all we're doing there. So we're just getting rid of all the excess content. So then once we have that, is I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to say price is equal to non-decimal. And then we're actually going to use the regular expression, so dot sub that with price. So that is going to give us the price that is properly formatted for our specifications. And then what we're going to do is return the price. So that's pretty much all we need to do here. Let's just go ahead and make sure that this is actually doing what we expect it to do. So if I go ahead and write this, and I'm going to clear the terminal. And let me go down here and make sure that we're running. So what are we doing? So we have our list like we did before from the previous video, which is just a list of toothpaste. We're going to instantiate an object of the class that we've been writing, pass in that list, and then we're going to go ahead and search for the items. So in the search function, what we do here is it actually calls all of those other functions and stores them in the list. And we're actually gonna see that it's hopefully doing what we expect it to do when it prints out the name, price, and URLs. Let's just go ahead and do that. So we'll say Python Amazon bot. If we do that, it should open up a Firefox browser. So that's, we see that, goes to the webpage, amazon.ca. It's gonna type in hopefully toothpaste. It's going to search. So let's see if it does that. So toothpaste searches for it. Uh, hopefully it should get the first item. Click on the link. So it's going to get that, goes to that link. And let's move this over a little bit so we can actually see the output. So it says this. So it looks like the uh, expected string or bytes object. Change one is a problem up here. So get product price, I believe I spelled incorrectly. So this should be get product spelled properly. The other thing that I want to make sure that we do is when we extract the contents here, I don't want to just find the ID that's going to be a selenium object. What I want to extract from there is actually the text of that object. So I'm going to put in dot text after each of these. 
Same thing with the product title. So otherwise we would just get <clears throat> a Selenium object back to us. So I'm going to make sure that we extract that text. Let's go ahead and write that. Let's give this another run and see if we get it to work. So it's going to open up a instance of Firefox. Go back to the web page, search for toothpaste, hopefully. Okay, so it searches for that. Click the first item. So we'll actually see if this does this properly. And let me move this aside just to make sure that it's actually doing what we think it's doing. So it says searching for toothpaste, grabs the price and also the title and the URL. So notice that the URL that it grabs and prints out here is the one with the short string. That's the one that points to it. It has the title that looks good. And it also has the price which is properly formatted. So just without any of the dollar signs or uh, any of the currency or anything like that. So that's good. So we've gotten the uh, elements that we want to extract from the Amazon page and the next subsequent videos what we're going to be doing is kind of tying this together. So namely we're going to put this information that we uh, have. Well, first of all, we're going to take the list that we have here. Instead of a dummy list, we're going to read that from our Google spreadsheet and then we're going to store that information that we get from this bot into our spreadsheet. And then we'll also add an email alert so that we can be updated about when this actually finishes. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.